Hello and welcome to Dos Gatos Forge. I'm Josh States. I'm here to uh, do another little video on knife making tips and tricks. And today we're going to do a video on how to avoid the warp in the quench. I hear a lot of makers talking about how when they do their own heat treating and they're quenching their blades, they often come out with a bend or a warp in them. So I've got a little thing that I put together. Um, I got the technique, honestly, from Tim Hancock, who, who taught me this um, technique for ensuring that your blades come out of the quench and stay sh straight as possible. But before we get to that, I want to um, give a little shout out to my three latest subscribers. We have three new subscribers I got notified about. We got Evans LeBlanc, Duke Nukem, and Daniel Leturza. Thank you guys for hitting the old subscribe button on the videos. We do appreciate it. So today we're going to be working on a dagger. And I've got this dagger here, and it's, uh, it's all rough ground and ready to go to heat treat. Um, and I'm going to show you how I quench this thing and pull it back out of the quench and straighten it while it's still warm um, in order to get it to lose any warping it might have developed. So I've got a little gizmo set up, as always. I like my tooling. And we're going to um, go over there and I'm going to show you how the, the, the press quench works, uh, the, the quench press works. Um, but first I want to tell you about um, the blades. Um, one is I've always got a flat spot and there's a flat spot running down the spine on the dagger. If we were using a buoy knife or a hunting knife, we would always have a, a flat spot along the spine area where we can press this in a vise and get it to, to come back to straight after quenching and heat treating. And you can see this, this buoy is quenched and tempered and it is as straight as a shotgun barrel. So here we go. I'm going to uh, move the camera over to the, um, the vise and we're going to talk about that for a minute. Thanks. Okay, so what we have here is we have a simple five inch uh, machinist vise. You can buy these at any hardware store, big box, home improvement store, whatever. The only thing that's really important is that it has removable jaws. These, these jaws are just held in by a couple of screws. This is the stock jaw. This is my replacement jaw. And this is what the, we use to get our blades straight. So. We can pull these screws out and we can take the jaws out and we can manufacture a couple of new jaws out of these one by three eighths inch copper bars. And I guess some guys may use aluminum, some guys use copper. Um, what you want is you want something that dissipates heat fast. So you pull these out, you match your, your copper bars, you match the holes, you countersink your, your holes and you put your copper bars in, in a replacement jaws. And there we go, Josh dropping stuff again. So what this will do is you can put your knives in here as they come out of the quench. And you can tighten the vise down and you can hold them straight. The only problem with that is very often you're grinding a distal taper into your blades and they're getting thinner as they go from the ricasso area or from the handle area out toward the tip. So it's not, it's not a perfectly even width all along. So you have to kind of adjust these to match the distal taper as best you can. And you do that before you heat the blade up. I've got some thin shim stock. I, I worked on this one last night. So this thin shim stock is about 0.01. And I found out that if I put two of these behind this spot here on each of these jaws, I can get a nice match on my distal taper when I bring my jaws together. So I'm going to just tighten my jaws down a little bit. 
with my shim material behind there. And we'll be ready to go into the tightening up on the on the dagger here. Now the dagger is interesting because your distal taper changes as you get further down the knife. And what I mean by that is you've got a a fairly even taper down to right about here. And then as you get to the point, that angle of that taper is going to get more drastic. So you're never going to get these bars to lay flat up against the whole thing. What we want to do is we want to get the majority of this knife, about 80% of it, um, to, to stay in line straight on the center line. And the tip may get a little wobbly on us, but it'll probably follow the rest of the blade and stay where it is, where it's supposed to be. Now, there are two reasons I think most guys end up with a warp coming out of the quench. The first one is that they have uneven grinding side to side and their edges aren't really centered where they're supposed to be. <clears throat> this isn't going to help you with that, but it is going to get the spine of your knife straighter when you come out of the quench and you're going to have to work on getting the grind in the center line to where it needs to be in the finished grind. The other reason is that they're grabbing their, this knife with a pair of tongs and they're going into the quench oil. And they, they're not going in straight. They're going in at an angle or they're going in, you know, lopsided. And, and that's going to cause slight variations in the cooling from side to side. And so what you want to do is you want to be able to come into your quench dead plumb, perfectly straight and fairly smoothly. So another thing Hancock taught me is drill a hole in your tang somewhere. It can be at the very end, depending upon where you want to do it. It can be a hole for a pin that goes through the handle and make yourself a hook. And when you come out of the heat at quenching tip, grab it by that hole and your knife is going to hang perfectly plumb and straight and nice and calm. And then you can quench nice and evenly. So that's what we're going to do. Now this is a W2 knife and I'm going to attempt to get some sort of a hemon down the center of this. So I'm going to take the knife out and I'm going to go clay the blade so when it comes back it's going to have all this stuff on it. I'm not going to videotape or go over the claying of a W2 blade. There's there's tons of videos out there on people claying blades to get a hemon out of it. Um, I think I did one on another video somewhere else as well. But that's when it comes back, you're going to see all this goop on this blade when we go into the oven for the quench. So uh, stay tuned. I'm going to go get this blade final prepped and we're going to be able to do the quench and put it into our vise. We're going to set the vise to the right width before we get into quenching. I should be able to get the knife in just like that. Oh, the really important thing is that whatever you set this vise on, you need to be able to rotate the head so it hangs down straight. And why that is, is you're going to come out of the quench with your knife on this hook, and you're going to come in here and you're going to stick and you're, and you're going to just tighten that up and hold it nice and tight like that. So you, whatever vise you use, it's got to have a rotating head. And whatever you put it on, you have to be able to rotate that head so you can get those, those bars dead vertical. Okay, so here we go. I check my oil temp. I'm right between 120 and 130 degrees, and I'm going to go for the quench. I 
Take the blade out, put it on our hook, and we go. Let the oil come off. Wipe the gunk. Wipe the gunk off. Put it into our press jig thing. And tighten her up. And that's it, folks. That's how you do it. And so here's the blade after scrubbing it off with some water. You can see it. And you can see it's pretty darn straight. Yeah, I am happy with that one. Well, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed this and I hope it helps some guys out along the ways. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I appreciate everybody who subscribes. And just in case anybody was interested, I, I, I don't have a really great hardness testing system, but I have these really cool hardness chisels, hardness testing chisels by Matt Parkinson at Dragon's Breath Forge. And, each one is labeled at a different specific hardness. It's been made to that hardness. And I've got the 64, which is the highest one I've got. And um, I, can't, I can't get it to, to cut or grab in this. So I know I'm at least 64 HRC or better at, hard, at hardened. It's going to go in the tempering oven here, and we're going to temper it up. Thanks for watching again. And don't forget, join your local Blacksmith Guild. Join... Uh, a knife making association, go network with people. I, I've learned so much from other people out there and you can learn much from a lot of different people. The, uh, Arizona, uh, the American Bladesmith Society is a great resource. Bladesmithsforum.com is a great forum. There's tons of information out there, but nothing works as well as getting into a shop with a real guy who's been doing it and having him show you hands-on. Go to your open forges at your local blacksmiths group and learn how to do it from the pros. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.